Hello and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will cover special settings for the mode bits. Let's take a more in-depth look into the mode bits. Earlier we talked about the three modes, read, write, and execute. There are actually three more mode bits that modify the behavior of the executable bit. There is a T for a sticky bit. There's also a capital X for special execute bit. And then lastly, there is a S that's setting the user ID and group ID. The execution bit is actually a little more complex than I had explained earlier in that the meaning of that bit actually is context dependent on whether you are referring to a file or directory. So with the execute bit, what we looked at before was that when it was referring to a file, if the execute bit is set, then that particular file is executable, right? You can run that command, that shell command or executed binary file. But if that bit is set on the folder, what that will do is that it will allow others to see inside that folder. So let's take a look at the execution bit as it applies to a folder. So I have a folder here called student. And if I do the ls minus l on that folder, I'm using a dash d so that it actually looks at the directory itself. What it shows me is that it has rewrite execute for the user, the group, and then for others, it has read and execute. So basically everybody can read and execute this folder. And so if we take a look at inside the folder, we have three subfolders called sub1, sub2, sub3, and then a file called wood. So now let's substitute user as another user that you have created. So we have Aaron from a previous video. So I'm gonna type in the password for Aaron. And now let's go ahead and CD into the temp folder where student is. Let's take a look at it again. All right, so you can see that the execution bit is set for this folder. And as Aaron, I can do an ls of the folder called student. And I can also take a look at the file inside called wood. Okay, so this is the example for when the execution bit is set. Let's get out of here as Aaron and go back to the student account. Now let's go ahead and change mode of this folder to 774. So now it removes the execution bit. Let's come back in as Aaron again. Now, if I do an ls of student would, it is going to give me permission denied because I don't have permission to execute the student folder, right? So it will let me look inside and look at the contents. I can do an ls, but I cannot look at that file called would. The mode bit, capital X, only applies to directories and it's a special execute bit. The use for this is if you have a case where you want to recursively set executable bit for directories but not for files, then this is what you would use. So let's take a look at what we have right now. We're gonna do ls of dash l long format and capital R for recursive on temp student. And as you can see, we have a bunch of subfolders and a regular file. Within the subfolder, we have another subfolder. And then within that, we have a regular file. So the instance of what we want to do now is we want to allow these subfolders to be executable by other users so that they can actually look inside and see these text files. However, we don't want to set the executable bits for the text files because they are not executable files. They're just merely text files. How we are going to do this is we're going to do chmod dash capital R for recursive. And then we're going to say all minus the executable and then add the special executable bit. I'm going to apply that to the student folder. And then do an ls minus l capital R 
to verify. So here now we see that the executable bits are all set for the others in the folders, but not for the files themselves. So this is how you use the special capital X mode bit. The mode bit S stands for set UID and set GID. That's setting the user ID and group ID. The set UID and set GID permissions are used to tell the system to run the executable file just like the owner or the group with their permissions. So what does that really mean? Let's take a look at, at an example. Let's take a look at the password command. And here it is on our system. As you can see, when you do a ls minus l, you see that the permissions for the owner, which is root, to be read, write, and s. Okay, and then for group and other, it's just read and execute. So here's what we're talking about with the set uid field, is that if that s is there, what that means is that when this program executes, it is gonna execute it like it's running as root with the root's permissions because root is the owner. It needs that because the password program actually needs to write into the password file. If we do an ls minus l on etsy password, we'll see that the only person that can write to it is the owner, which is root. So if we don't execute the password command as root, then we won't be able to write into this file. So that is the purpose for this set UID and GID mode bit. Let's take a look at how to use it. So I have a file called evil.sh is a evil shell script. And currently the mode bits is reading and writing for the user, the group, and only reading for the other users. So let's go ahead and do the user plus s. We want to set the user ID such that whenever somebody executes evil.sh, they have the privileges of the student account. Okay, so once we've set it, let's take a look at it. So sure enough, it's changed this bit a little bit. So now it's a capital S. So one thing to note is that if the bit is a capital S, that's kind of a warning to us that something isn't right. The reason behind it is that the executable bit was actually not set. Remember before we looked at it? It was actually not set when we set the set UID bit. So now if we go ahead and set that bit, user plus x, and then take a look at the ls command again. Now we see that this has changed to lowercase s, which is the normal behavior, which is what you want to see. So now this means that the evil.sh file does have the executable set behind the s. And then on top of that, the s makes sure when somebody runs it, it runs it as the student account or as the privileges with the student account. The last of the modifications to the executable bit is the letter T, which stands for sticky bit. When the sticky bit is applied to a file, what that does is that it saves the program's image into the swap space so that it will load more quickly when run. However, for our purpose, because we're running Linux, the Linux kernel actually ignores the sticky bit on files but now you know what it does on a Unix machine. When the sticky bit is applied to a directory, it sets what's called the restricted deletion flag. What this means is that this will now prevent unprivileged users from removing or renaming a file in a directory unless they are a owner. So what that means is that you can only remove a file if you are the owner of the sticky directory, the owner of the file, or the root users. So this is really useful for shared folders like slash temp. So let's take a look at what that means. So we're gonna do a ls minus ld for the directory on slash temp. And so as you can see, slash temp is a directory that has read, write, execute for the owner, which is root, read, write, execute for the group, which is the root group, 
and then read write and then the T which is the sticky bit for everybody else all right so what this means is within this temp folder if there are files in there created by a certain user another user will not be able to remove it because they are not the owner of the file they are not root and they don't own the sticky bit directory let's take a look at a example usage I'm going to create a new folder called shared folder and then I'm going to create a new file in it called random file okay and then we're going to chmod this file so that everybody has full privileges of read write and execute okay so we're going to do a ls minus l just to verify and sure enough you can see the 777 resulted in full writes for everybody now we are going to go ahead and set the sticky bit on share folder and then we're going to take a look at share folder so you can see that the sticky bit is on All right so now what we're going to do is we are going to su switch user to Aaron and as Aaron I should have full rights to look at that file All right sure enough that's the data now the question is can I remove that file and the answer should be no because even though that file has read write and executable for everybody so I should be able to delete it however because a sticky bit is set for the folder that it is contained within this should prevent me from deleting that file and there we go we get a permission denied so that's the reason right so once again even though I have full permissions to do anything to that file I cannot because the sticky bit is set on the folder which holds the file and with that sticky bit being set there's only three people who can remove a file in there one is the root user the second one is the owner of the file and the third one is the owner of the sticky directory and Aaron is none of those therefore it results in a denial of removal and that's the sticky bit all right so that brings us to the end of this video where we looked at special settings for the mode bits beyond read write and execute we took a more in-depth look at using the command chmod to invoke these special modes Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.